So, uh, my great pleasure to introduce you to uh, a good friend of mine, Derek Mills, uh, who's an author with Hay House, uh, a zillionaire and an incredible <laughs> person. So, really, really pleased to have him here because we're going to have an interesting time chatting to Derek. So, welcome, Derek. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for coming. Um, as you probably know, the first question I'm going to ask you, the question I always ask is, tell us about a bit about yourself um, and, and, and include something that people wouldn't know about you. Wow, okay. So, um, I'm father of four, married, and have been so for 23 years now. Did I get that right? Didn't well I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for, for 23 years now. Um, and I guess that the, the most uh, significant thing about my life is that from when I was about 20 years old to I was about, in my, about 38 years old, I was a, a real failure, you know. Um, failing in my career, relationships, life, health, pretty much everything that was important, you know, I was uh, failing in all, the, in all those areas and um, really just was able to wake up one day and kind of change and realise what I really had. I guess that people um, might want to know is that I'm a genius, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> after, after 18 years of, of failure as an adult, I woke up one day and realised that I was a genius. What's really important about that, as you already know, is that if I'm a genius, everyone's a genius. And what I share is about how to get that, that genius into the world. But some of the, I think a lot of people know. Um, wow, that, that, that's a tough one than I thought it might be. Oh, there you have a think Yeah, 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 that'll come yeah. back to me. <clears throat> because yeah, yeah. those of you who, who watch this regularly will know that you know, one of the themes uh, that is important in my work is the whole idea of genius. In fact, oh, okay. the book yeah, yeah. which goes along with this, for this series, yeah. Live, Get the Life You Love Now, mm -hmm. and there's a whole chapter, about three or four chapters, all about the idea that actually everybody is a genius. Yeah. Everyone is a genius. Yeah. And one of the things I look at is what we call upside down genius, which oh. is not a, not only are we geniuses at brilliant things, we can mm. also be geniuses at things that are absolutely disastrous for us, and we oh, can be equally good at that. I like yeah? that. Yeah. When you think about it, you that's... were a genius at failure. <laughs> <laughs> you got me first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely right. I was, uh, and I was really good at that. I'd have been, <laughs> be, be the Olympic where, team. Where, where the opposite of Nobel Prize winning <laughs> is around that. That's where I would have got that award. Would have been there with me in Stockholm. Where and, they give the award. and I think what's fascinating about yeah. genius generally and what you just said is how can someone who's consistently been a genius at failure for 18 years then turn it, turn it, turn it around yeah. instantly? That's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. And then consistently be really brilliant to yeah. succeed. Indeed. You know what's. The, because there's nothing really different. You didn't have a, a brain transplant in that no. magical moment. No. It was you all along. So Indeed. tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. There's a valid point there because um, after 18 years when I woke up and turned my whole life around and helped others do that, I must have been a genius. All of those 18 years, as you really well said there actually, is that um, using being a genius in the wrong way. What and I, I me to wake up is that I actually genuinely believe that uh, the whole of life, the whole of creation, the universe, whatever you, whatever you call it, is kind of... Um, Constantly trying to to get to you to say, hey, I mean, you're, you're part of you're part of everything. You're part of intelligent energy. You're a, you're absolute genius. You have great things inside of you. Uh, wake up, wake up, and it gives us words, thoughts, questions, phrases, ideas, and opportunities to wake up and to go within and discover the genius. But for most people, it's like that you know metaphorical walking along the road, kicking over a pot of gold, you know, in the sand. Realizing what's inside, being fearful of the shift that would occur, the change, recovering the pot, you know, and walking on, you know, whistling. Because I knew in my uh, failure genius <laughs> that, um, that things came to me, um, but they didn't shift me. Things, you know, one day I remember working so hard, six days a week until 10, 11 o'clock in the evening, driving home one, one late night from a client across country and crashing my car on the motorway and nearly killing myself. That was a sign, you know. <laughs> you're too many hours, you fell asleep at the wheel, you, know, you were crashing into the barrier, whatever it is. Um, that was, but I didn't pay attention. And oftentimes, the big obvious sledgehammer things that come to us don't cause us to shift. For me, and for many people, it becomes the still, small voice. The word, the, the, word, the thought, the question, the phrase that comes sideways and just says, you know, what time do you get in this morning? which makes you go, well, actually really early. I'm doing 16, 18 hour days here. 
I'm doing that for years and for years. I'm not seeing my kids, not seeing my wife. I'm not healthy, I'm stressed out. My clients are abusing me, I'm driving 30, 40,000 miles a year driving around the country. Oh my goodness, this isn't even my life. What a disaster. If I want to go one more day on this planet, I'm going to do it as me. And to have that truth reveal and make a decision to be me. And knowing truthfully that until that point as an adult for after 18 years, I wasn't even happy. If you're not happy, what's the point? And that for you is that, that core calling moment. Tell us a bit more about this yeah. truth, the being you thing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I recognise that uh, every one of us um, comes here as truth. Now, we are the truth. But what happens in, in the world as we become children and young adults and, uh, and uh, as full-blown adults is we kind of allow the world to make us the, what we are not, what I call the non-self. And the non-self is where we pay more attention to the outside world with a massive external frame of reference. And we qualify ourselves based upon what we've got, what we've achieved, and that's always in line with what the world has got and achieved. And by that judgment, we can call ourselves success or failure. And, and we say to ourselves, we're going to be trying, we're going to be happy based upon that success. Now, I think like yourself, Phil, you know, if I met um, more people than I have in the world who have achieved worldly success, who are just not happy. So maybe that isn't it. <laughs> no, maybe achieving goals and stuff isn't what makes us truly happy. So for me, it became a recognition that maybe the truth the, uh, the, and, and also the true way of being happy is to discover that which we already are and just to be that. I know that may sound beyond some people, but think about it this way. Let's suppose that we are you know, eternal. Now, energy can't be created or destroyed. Spirit can't be created or destroyed. It just always was. So wherever we were before we were born and wherever we are after we're born, you know, we're kind of here now. We were something before and we'll be something afterwards. But we're here now. And maybe this thing that we are, the essence, the spirit of who we truly are, is on this planet, in this physical, you know, touch it, feel it, hear it, count it world, um, for an experience as part of the total journey. And for us to be truly happy, we have to discover that which we came here as. Not to be something else, but we came here. What came here? What was born here? What, 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 what is this life and spirit energy that, that, that exists within inside of me? It's in discovery and the realization of that that we become happy. So I, I, for, for me, it's about saying, I think the monk is what the last 140 years has told us about set your goals and you'll be happy. Because I just asked the question, well, how's that working out for you? <laughs> you know, how's that working out for the world? You know, research done by Leslo PR last year, 2012, um, kind of just said that 3% uh, of North Americans achieve their life goals. Now, what if you've pinned your happiness and success to achievement of those goals? 3% is not a big number. Mm. What about the rest of, of humanity? So what if we've got that wrong? Just we can part that for a second and say, what if another thing is that we came here, energy, spirit, talent, gifts, wisdom, love, life, whatever you want to call it. What if true happiness is the discovery of that and just the being of that? Mm. So realize what it is and then make it real in the world. That which we discover about ourselves, we make it real. We just do that. And then we become happy because that's what happiness is about, just shifting it. It's, it's I that makes sense yeah, to most people. It makes, don't know. It makes a lot of sense. Now, there's two things that, that call to me from that. Mm -hmm. First of all, the a theme in my work, and it sounds like very much echoed in yours, is about the idea of being present. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, all that there is right now is, is now, is yeah. here, is us. Yeah. And to embrace that, and I talk about it in my book where I, I say, a bit like you, you know, crashing in the car or the guy saying, What time did you get out in this morning? Mm -hmm. the, there are certain moments where we suddenly get it. Mm -hmm. You know, so classically, uh, if somebody's just had a newborn baby, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, they, you know, they, they come out of hospital with their little baby, yeah. and they can't quite believe the world seems to be going on regardless of this momentum of event that's occurred in their lives. Why yeah. is everybody not taking a day off? Because yeah. this is <laughs> because they're actually there. Suddenly, they, they yeah. notice in the moment. And when people get mm -hmm. get well from an illness or or miss a nasty diagnosis, and yeah. the doctor goes, "We've checked it. Actually, it's not cancer." Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go. Whew, and yeah. suddenly they realise how great it is to breathe, and yeah. you know how, how beautiful the sound of garbage <laughs> trucks are driving. Yeah. You know, because you you, you're there, Amen. you're in that moment again. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and no. the other thing, no, no, no. the other thing I was going to say about the thing you said was uh, really interesting language. You know, spiritual, oneness, being, all that stuff. And yet, you know, you come from a corporate world. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is uh, you're very successful not only in the corporate world. But 
wealth generation and, and management, but also in coaching and, and speaking to corporates mm -hmm. and you know, high-end corporates about these things, about changing the, 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 the environment within corporations, which I think is really exciting. So tell us a bit more about that, about your vision for that and how that's going. <laughs>